Hello everyone and welcome or welcome back to this channel for another vital tutorial. This will be the third of my small series about how to make wave tables in vital. And after discussing how to make them out of samples and how to make them with uh, the waves, wave sources and line sources and how to use the modifiers, I'm going to talk about resynthesis. What is it? How to do it? And why? Let's get going. So here we are with Vital and for once it's not the usual sawtooth and initialized patch I usually start my videos with, but something slightly more complex just to save you some time of having me set everything up like this. So let me turn off this filters for a moment and I'll show you what's happening in this wavetable. There's lots of stuff, you see there's two different sources with lots of modifiers, a bunch of breakpoints, or actually keyframes, and this is what happens if I play a note. You can see it, it's quite complex, there's a lot of things happening. And what is happening in particular, you might wonder, is there is the fact that, you see here, we have all those waves which are mathematically generated, which are then being processed with more work out of our processor, and uh, then all that is summed together into that wavetable. And here I also add these two filters, which are a phaser filter and a formant filter. They're just examples, I mean, it's just an idea, you can do it with whatever you want. And these two have some stuff which is being modulated by this LFO. And now... So we have this sound. Now, uh, notice I have bothered to put... Actually, I haven't here, I'll just make sure I do. Uh, I bothered to make sure there is a, a note key tracking on uh, there is a note key tracking on my on every single thing which is moving controlling the frequency so this one has 100% uh, keeper tracking and this one too even though this is also moved by the LFO. This is so that, you know, whatever note I press, I will get, even a fundamental, the same spectrum coming out of it. This is important, actually. So once we know this, well, all we can need to do is right-clicking. I could do it on this oscillator too, but I'll do it on another one and say resynthesize preset to wavetable. Now, there is this slight audio glitch any time I do that, and what has happened if I turn this off, and this off, and this off, but this one on, and I modulate this with this very same LFO. I have a wavetable made out of this wavetable, processed with uh, these few two filters, and you see everything was being modulated by this LFO1, which is four seconds long. And what happened is that I have here a sample, a wavetable made out of a sample, which is exactly, was exactly four seconds long. This is the reason for why setting uh, an LFO to four seconds, because the resynthesized thing just samples four seconds of my sound. And and now this thing is slightly kinder on my CPU because now all I'm doing is just scanning a sample. This is just the beginning because you, you can actually integrate into this process, well, anything. You could go for chorus, distortion, EQing and automating your EQ, other filters, whatever. One thing you can't do is embedding in there some stereo information. The samples for wavetables are mono, so there's little use in doing it. Uh, well, there, there could be something strange happening if you add some unison and maybe some relevant detuning, because now if I, if I do resynthesize this here, I will have it being resynthesized as uh, with a, a bit of a mess, because there's going to be... Yeah, this volume is to zero. There's gonna be some you know, slight uh, issues uh, in the connection between one frame to the other, of the or to the other, because you see that they're not always exactly the same wavelength because they are at different tunings. 
uh, would, the thing would get more more relevant if we increase the tuning further. Uh, even more if we do something such as say I get this one um, 12 semitones down and I do again resynthesize it here. What will happen is that this thing is see slightly more unstable and it's not really manifesting uh, the the sub oscillator why because you see uh, the, f the the window size we take for that is exactly the size of my fundamental so if i have a thing which is one octave below the fundamental the, the window size i would need to catch that frequency would be twice as long and uh, this is really not working in that department i mean we have we have some effect but you know we're not having the right window size we would need to get the sound we had oh this is our these are just a couple of kind of complex ideas for this but you can go for simpler things say for example you just want to embed somehow in a wavetable the behavior of a filter and maybe a distortion to get the character of it to make a sound which would be would be you know somehow a sound you would think of making in subtractive synthesis but making it only in a wavetable so that you know you have the rest of your synth free to do whatever whatever you want it to do you know like having other wavetables doing other stuff letting your filters free to process sounds in creative more creative ways so like for example here i have a low pass filter i'll get my key tracking to the max i'll use a dirty because it because it's dirty and then get this lfo one it's four seconds again to control the frequency and now we have this thing happening and now serious amount of saturation maybe slightly less of this maybe 24 db okay this is set to zero from the beginning zero okay cool now we might want some distortion too on this right we do do we uh, soft clip, hard clip, linear fold, sine fold. And maybe some more filtering. to automate this distortion to to slightly less this is a little too much something you know it's something already i think it's something which makes a bit of sense so now we have this four seconds and i say resynthesize set to wavetable get my usual audio glitch and now if i turn everything off i have this and Now I can do, you know, different things with it. Say I disconnect it from this and now I want to maneuver it with an envelope, say, and do something. And also, now I have a thing, which is the fact that here, if I do add some unison, uh, you see, uh, Old school synths had the idea that unison was uh, at the voice level. Here in Vital and like in Serum, uh, in Zebra, in a lot of other modern synths, you have unison at an oscillator level, which somehow is a more intelligent thing to do, especially it's more CPU friendly, though using the word CPU friendly while talking about Vital is kind of, is kind of ridiculous. But uh, now I say I have this seven voices of unison but one thing i can do here in the advanced menu i can do it here i can do the same thing in serum is just adding the stable spread so that i have that the various voices in my unison aren't at the same exact position in the wavetable so And 
you see, actually, this filter isn't doing anything. I mean, I'm just, I'm just using a weight table. And then I could, you know, create more complex things. Other stuff happening. This is already my sawtooth being processed by the filter and by the by the distortion unit and uh, just a little of unison gets a long way now uh, as I could mention this is you know the thing is as you probably know if you've seen my not my, not my previous video the one before that the one in which I meant the one with Bender in the thumbnail I was mentioning how to make wavetables out of samples so you know you, you can already do that I mean it, there would be no no real issue in recording what your synth is doing and then importing it into a wavetable or recording what some other synth is doing and importing it to an, it into a wavetable uh, so this is just for let's say the sake of convenience you know you just say right click and make a wavetable and so you have it and that's that's basically all there is to it. Uh, unfortunately, as long if you do it in Vital here, you have no access to these uh, bins, this FFT bins, and so you, you can't really go and edit it in too much detail, but you can add all the modifiers you want, which is some, some nice add-on, which other synths don't offer. While if you did the same thing in Serum, which allow you to do that, it also that too allow you to do uh, resynthesis in one click, well, then you can go and go through, if you have some patience, through the all 256 uh, s windows of your wave table and edit the, the bins one by one and see what's what and how you like it. Uh, these are not the only synths that do it in one click. I know for sure there is Union that does it. It makes a big deal in its description of itself and on the website of the fact that hey you can do resynthesis in one click and there's other synths that can do that i'm quite sure i just don't know about them and uh, then again you can do it in you can do the other way i mean just not being so convenient not having the convenience and doing it in one, one click uh, you can do the same thing with basically any other wavetable synth, including Ableton wavetable, just drop a sample there and make your own thing. You know, record what you're doing with your synth, then import, the, import it back in the synth, and then keep processing it and working it on and doing things, and something meaningful hopefully will cut out, something inspiring, something something you didn't expect, something, who knows, I mean, what, what, what you're doing. I can tell you this is interesting. I mean, I ended up having made quite some interesting sounds out of it. Say, where was this? This one was a pad I made just m mostly out of uh, a bunch of these uh, resynthesized wavetables and uh, Yeah, there is some filtering too, but the, the main point, there is some effect, you know, this is a kind of a finished sound, but that was the idea mostly. And yep, this was presynthesis. If there is something you think you, I didn't mention, well, let me know in the comments and I'll try to, you know, talk about it, mention it somehow. So, thank you for staying with me this long. This was a little bit shorter than my usual videos, but as you might have understood, there, there wasn't that much to say. Uh, it was, was quite a simple concept, really, just an idea and a bunch of applications. Uh, my next video will not be a Vital tutorial. I'll be talking about comparing Vital with um, Surge, which is a beast, and with Odin and with Graphite, you know, making something akin to a um, free wavetable synth showdown on my channel. And uh, I hope you find it interesting. It's, you know, because I really like Vital, it's a wonderful instrument. I've been making amazing patches, I've been pressing the save button on that more than on anything in ages, really. I mean, quite a while definitely and it's uh, it's a wonderful instrument but it's you know it has its character it has its thing it has its limits like everything else by the way and so you know exploring other ideas could be useful and comparing what the various various synths offers well offer well definitely something good i believe this said i hope you will come and watch that video too and uh, see you then if you haven't yet please do subscribe to this channel. There might be a button here to do so, and uh, that will help me help me out a lot into making this video. So, 
Again, thanks and bye.